Okay, hello again class. This is Demetrius Wilson, Principles of Management, Chapter 10 Lecture, Part 2. We have a few more slides to go. We'll try and get through them pretty quickly. I know I say that every time. Uh, choosing a decision-making model. Uh, so decision-making model is on the left side, and then you want to use this model when is on the right side. So the rational model, you want to use it when information on alternatives can be gathered and quantified. So if things can be quantified, uh, they're quantifiable as opposed to uh, uh, ones that are kind of qualitative. Uh, you want to use a rational decision model. A decision, the decision is important and you are trying to maximize your outcome. That's when you use rational. Bounded rationality, uh, the minimum criteria are clear. You do, not, you do not have or you are not willing to invest much time in making the decision. So that's kind of like what they call a swag decision. Like, hey, this is the information. I think in general I can make it. We'll go ahead with that. And you're not trying to maximize your outcome. Uh, so right here you're trying, to, you're trying to squeeze everything out of the turnip on the rational decision-making model. Intuitive, goals are unclear. There is a time pressure and analysis paralysis would be costly. So you got to make a decision. you got to pull the trigger. And you have experience with the problem. You've done it before. My gut instincts tell me to do this. Creative, solutions to the problem are not clear. New solutions need to be generated. And you have no time to immerse yourself in the issue. Now you have to get creative. And I'm sure you all gotten creative before. Uh, this is uh, this is probably slide 22. This is probably the furthest in the lecture we've, that we've had discussion questions. But uh, you, you're not going to get away that easy without seeing some discussion questions. So please be sure to review those uh, with a partner in the class or a family member or with yourself. Right. Uh, so faulty decision making bias. So I'm going to have to increase this a little bit so I can read it to you. But it is actually good stuff. So anchoring an adjustment bias occurs when individuals react to arbitrary or irrelevant numbers when setting financial or other uh, numerical targets. Right. Uh, availability bias occurs when more readily available information is incorrectly assessed to also be more likely. Uh, escalation commitment bias occurs when individuals continue on a failing course of action even after it becomes clear uh, that this may be a poor path to follow. So basically you've invested this time, energy, and money into this project and it's going to fail. You know it's going to fail, but because you've invested so much time, energy, and money, you continue on with it and that is not the correct path. Fundamental, you have to know when to cut your losses. Fundamental attribution error occurs uh, when good outcomes are attributed to personal characteristics, uh, but undesirable outcomes are attributed to external circumstances. So uh, we have a good month. Sales go great. Uh, you know, I'm just the greatest salesperson ever. And then we have a bad month. And then I say, you know what? The market out there is just kind of crazy and nobody wants to buy anything this month, right? Well, if I was a good salesperson last month, then I got to be a bad salesperson this month because, you know, the variables out there were probably the same. Hindsight bias occurs when mistakes seem obvious after they have already occurred. Like, oh, yeah, you know, that's what I was going to do. And I, yeah, I, I was going to do it. I just didn't have time. But that's that's hindsight. They say hindsight is twenty twenty. Well, hindsight is not going to help you. Uh, if you've already made the decision and already failed on the problem. Uh, judgments about correlation and ca uh, causality uh, bias occurs when individuals make inaccurate attributions uh, about the causes of events, right? So they're saying, hey, because it was a full moon, uh, you know, there were 3,000 more accidents on the street, right? Uh, misunderstandings about sampling bias occurs when individuals draw broad conclusions from small sets of observations instead of more reliable sources, right? So if you take a project management class, you'll learn about quantifying data and sampling and using those type of sources. Overconfidence. Now, this is the guy on the... Um, progressive commercial uh, that's down at Venice Beach and the guy's there he's juggling the 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 flame and the the chainsaw right and the guy's like give it to me I can do it I can do it right so overconfidence bias occurs when individuals are more confident in their abilities to predict an event uh, than logic suggests and actually is actually possible and you know I've been there before uh, representatives and uh, uh, representativeness and framing bias occurs uh, when the way the information is being presented alters the decision an individual make right so I always go back to the example of the dabness Brickney example uh, you know uh, on the Cosby show so uh, Bill Cosby was yelling at his daughter about uh, bringing the boyfriend home and she was like well you know I'm he say say he, he could be the greatest guy ever right 
He said, but it's the manner in which you brought him home. He brought him home and just said, hey, we're married. And he, he, you know, he made it equivalent to, he said, he said, here's a lobster dinner right here. And she said, oh, yeah. He's like, would you like to eat the lobster dinner? She said, yeah, of course I would. And then he put the lobster dinner on a trash can lid. And he said, what about now? Right. And so that's that's the equivalent of that. It's like, that's how you represent it. That's it. That's how you frame it. And you represent it. Then I probably do not want not probably I do not want to eat a lobster dinner off of a, a, a trash uh, can lid. That That's for sure. And it satisfies and occurs when individuals settle for the first acceptable alternative instead of seeking for the best possible or optimal decision. So there is this thing and doesn't mention it here, but it's this thing called the second right answer. Right. So a lot of times people look for the first right answer, look for the second right answer, because the second right answer will probably make you more money or save you more money and be a better decision than the first right answer. Uh, it's a good thing to look for. I know it save you some time if you just go with the first right answer, but look for that second right answer. Uh, fast and furious come the discussion questions. So describe a time when you fell into one of the decision making traps. How did you come to realize that you had made a poor decision? So go through those that, like as I've been saying all semester, the discussion questions are very, very valuable. Uh, decision making in groups. So group decision making draws from the experience and perspective of a large number of individuals. Groups have a greater potential to become more creative, uh, which can lead to a more effective decision, right? More people, uh, more ideas, more creativity. Groups uh, make the task more enjoyable for members, and group members uh, will be more invested in the decision. Of course, that is unless you do not like people, and then you do not want to make any group decisions. Uh, so analyzing different levels of decision making. So uh, let's look at the individual decision making side versus group decision making. So here are the pros for individual. Uh, typically faster than group decision making. Best individual in group usually outperforms the group. And accountability is easier to uh, determine. Cons, fewer ideas, right? So if I'm the only one thinking of it, I've got less ideas than 20 people. Identifying the best individual can be challenging and possible. I know all you guys are saying, no, it's not hard to identify the best individual. It's me. Uh, possible to put off the, uh, making decisions if left alone to do it. Now, uh, let's look at uh, group decision making. So pros, uh, diversity of ideas uh, and can piggyback on other ideas, greater commitment to ideas, and interaction can be fun and serves as a team building task. Cons, and these are you know pros and cons, positives, negatives, takes longer. Group dy uh, dynamics such as groupthink can occur. And social loafing is uh, harder to identify the responsibilities uh, for, uh, for decisions. So group dynamics such as groupthink. So they'll talk about this about the challenge. Groupthink is not a good thing. It may sound like it's okay, but it's really not a good thing. Groupthink means that everybody in the room says the sky is green. I know the sky is blue, but everybody in the room is saying the sky is green, so now I'm going to say the sky is green. And social loafing, that's exactly what you think it is. Those are the people who are slacking off, not coming to the group meeting, things like that. And so you do a great presentation and that person gets an A2. Well, they were just loafing. They weren't doing anything. Uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, it, a lot of teachers try and find different ways to, to deal with that because uh, it's prevalent and always will be. So groupthink, and uh, I'll try and put up a video uh, on this so that you guys can truly understand how groupthink really um really contributed to this disaster a group pressure a phenomenon that increases the risk of a group making a flawed decision by leading to reduced mental efficiency reality testing and moral judgment uh, the challenger exploded 73 seconds after liftoff killing all seven of the astronauts aboard and so if you're around my age range uh, you were actually sitting in grade school watching that having a good time and this is before there's like a you know pause button or or a delay or anything like that and that you know, the challenger just blew up right in front of us and we're all looking at each other like, uh, you know, hey, you know, was that supposed to happen? And, you know, teacher obviously quickly turned the, the television off. Uh, so eight symptoms of group think won't go through all of these, but um, I want you guys to, to go back and, and, and check those out. Uh, direct pressure uh, is, is pretty much one like, you know, and, and group think can occur like in a jury room, right? We're just going to pressure this person. No, we know he's guilty. We're all going to say, it. come on, you, you need to get on board. Uh, you know, and, and, and go with what all the rest of us are saying. So tools and techniques for making better decisions. So we can all, you know, utilize this. Nominal group technique, the Delphi technique, majority rule, consensus, GDSS, and decision trees. So once you look all these up in your in your text, whether you have your hard copy textbook or your electric or electronic copy, uh, you know, decision trees say, hey, if this, then this, and if that, then that, right? You can go ahead and go through the tree and make your uh, make your uh, decisions. Discussion question, do you prefer to make decisions in a group or alone? And what are the main reasons for your preference, right? So let me give you an example. If I said I prefer to make decisions on my own, I say because whatever decision I make, that's what's going to go. 
uh, or I could say I prefer to make decisions in a group because then it's more like more than likely we're going to make a better decision. So go through all those discuss discussion questions on your own. Uh, now this is really good, so pay close attention. Uh, this is the six step pre-mortem process to increase your success. So to increase your success, why don't you go through what could go wrong before you make a decision or do anything? So it says outline a plan, imagine any failures and why they might have happened, right? Share items until all potential problems have been identified. So you identify all the problems. Review the list uh, for additional items, right? So find out the additional items. Sort issues into categories and search for themes, right? So put them in a category, search for the themes. And then revise the plan to correct flaws and avoid problems, right? So let's just pretend all of these problems already happened, right? But they really didn't because I haven't put my, my action into play. So I just say, hey, let's just pretend like they happen and then let's adjust accordingly. And that is a really good way to go about doing things. So last but not least, uh, 30, uh, slide 32, more discussion questions. How might uh, you use the pre-mortem uh, technique uh, to be more effective within groups or, or, or at school or work, right? So definitely want you to key in and, and, and think about that process and see how can that help me uh, in the long run. And most specifically, uh, it will be in work. So as always, uh, this is the end of uh, Chapter 10, Principles of Management. Have a good day, a great week. Make sure that you take all of the applicable quizzes, uh, complete all of the assignments, and uh, the class is not too far from being over. Have a good one.